Mark chapter 5, verse 35. And we'll read it from 35 to the end. If someone could read that for us. Um, I guess I'll read it. <laughs> uh, 35 to the end of chapter 5, right? Um, while he was still speaking, they came from the house of the synagogue of Fisher, saying, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher anymore? But Jesus, overhearing what was being spoken, said to, to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid any longer, only believe. And he allowed no one to accompany him, except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the synagogue official, saw a brother, sorry, uh, and he saw a commotion, and people loudly wept, weeping and wailing. And entering in, he said to them, Why making a commotion and weep. The child has not died, but is asleep. They began laughing at him, but putting them all out, he took along the child's father and mother and his own companions and into the room where the child was. Taking the child by the hand, he said to her, I don't know, I can't really read in Hebrew, so um, say like, thank you, Talika Kum, which translated means little girl, I say to you, Immediately the girl got up and began to walk, for she was twelve years old, and immediately they were completely astounded, then strict orders that no one should know about this, and he said that something should be given to her. For background, it's very simple, just the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. How does this show us that Jesus is the Messiah? He's God himself. And today, when you get a chance, I got to read over Mark 1 again and uh, quote in Isaiah. In uh, verse 2, I believe, uh, Isaiah chapter 40. Read the whole ch Isaiah chapter 40, and it tells us how great Yahweh is. It's where the song, Behold, Our God, comes from. So read over that chapter again. Who has held the oceans in his hands? Who has numbered every grain of sand? And then he comes as the man, Jesus. So let's turn in my notes. I don't have much on 38, so I think we could start from 38, kind of just verse 38 and go from there. It came to the house of the synagogue official. So again, Jairus is... I'm sure just holding on to faith, very difficult because he sees everything. They see all the commotion. Any other observation? Is this true mourning or false? I'm sorry, I missed the question. Is it true mourning, weeping, or false? Yeah. So some might be false, but why do you think it's false or not? Isn't it back then they used to hire like more professional mourners and wailers? That's why. Right. And then they mock, they were mocking him. <laughs> yeah, there are some false ones, but I, I believe there are also some true ones. As in any, when anyone passes away, to know that they do hire people. Anything else? 38 or 39? What do you see? Any questions? Um, I would say that they're in the house of the synagogue. So I'm guessing that, you know, I don't really know much about the synagogue. I'm guessing it's like a small chapel or something. Well, it's the house of the synagogue official. So it's not the actual synagogue. Oh, okay. So it's like someone who uh, lived there pretty much, right? Yeah, interestingly, it says that Jesus saw a commotion. It didn't say they saw the commotion. But whatever reason, it's emphasizing Jesus. And it's interesting in verse 39, it's some, if anything, verse 38's observations, it shows us that the girl is dead. If it could be any more obvious that someone died because there's loud crying and wailing. It's not as if is she may be dead, maybe not. You know, maybe she's sleeping. No, she. they know she's dead. I don't know exactly the... The, what happens after you die to the body, but at what point does the color of the you know of the skin start disappearing and, and it becomes very obvious that the person's dead. Obvious that the girl died. Now what about thirty nine? Was Jesus using a euphemism? What was he saying when he said this? It seems no compassion, huh? It didn't even say, Oh, oh like uh don't cry. Yeah, he wasn't comforting them. He's like telling them like, Why are you guys making all this noise? Like she's just sleeping. That's really weird, huh? You don't think of Jesus as that. You think of Jesus maybe, as meek and mild, and he is. Uh -huh. Maybe that's another indication that their um their crying was was ungenuine. Because you mm. know when uh when was it? when Lazarus died and Jesus wept, right? <laughs> mm. So he had compassion at that moment, but then here, but God knows their hearts. Mm. That's why it said like they were paid mourners. Even if they're not, let's just take it as the view that. There, let's say there are some paid mourners. It's, I've read books where it says that's their culture, but the thing is, Mark mm -hmm. doesn't say anything about that. So that's just something to think about. Mm -hmm. Even cause some commentaries say at age 12 is when the when people are able to get married back then. But at the same time, I mean, 42 says little girl. 
So it doesn't sound like a little girl would get married anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to stick to the text what it says. But let's just say these are genuine mourners. There's a point that Jesus is making here, at least that we can see. And I was thinking about it today. I didn't notice this. Notice in verse 40, when they began laughing at him, they were laughing at Jesus, his person, what he says. Like he, They don't see him as a man who has authority. They're also laughing. Think about it. They're laughing at the faith that the synagogue official chose to have, right? If if, uh, if your family member was very sick and they said, hey, there's a, I think there might be a cure, we wouldn't laugh it off, right? I mean, even if we thought it wasn't that wise, but hey, you tried everything else. There's no, no other hope. Let's try it. But here they were just outright rejecting Jesus. And reading on ahead to chapter six too, uh, Jesus went back to his hometown and they rejected him. So it seems like the title is turning in some of the crowd. They were beginning to uh, listen to the ridicule of the religious leaders. Actions were very different than their conquering Messiah that they were waiting for. Any other observations? Just kind of going back on the part where they say he's laughing at him, I was thinking like, um, I was really into dark humor. So just hearing that laughing at him is kind of like, you know, death is not really for them. Um, it's like sometimes, you know, death is like somewhat of a joke kind of thing. Um, it's really hard to explain. It's like, you know, when, when someone dies, it's like sometimes they, they laugh about it, but it's not really a joke, you know, when someone really dies. That's why it's hard for me to kind of see them as being genuine with their grief. Like, if I'm in, like, really grieving over a loved one, I can't just, like, put on a switch and just, like, start laughing at something, even if I'm ridiculing. Like, mm -hmm. if I'm in morning, like, I can't just, like, switch on an opposite emotion, you know? I'm, like, so yeah. focused on what happened to the loss of a loved one like i can't i can't even compute to me like I'm trying to think of an example let's say I, I used to read into this about people who there is a company that if you sign up like you know pay them a lot of money the moment you die they try to what chiro cryogenically freeze your body mm -hmm. or if if you don't can't pay the whole amount then they just take your head and think about that if, if i was to see that coming i, I could in a sense, I could have the same kind of ridicule, right? It's just like, dude, this is so absurd, even if it's a place of mourning. So it's possible that they're really mourning, but they're also at the same time rejecting Jesus so much. So I'm just trying to, you know, think on the opposite spectrum where this may be possible. So again, it's not just the parents. I'm sure they had, you know, the uncles and aunts of this sibling, of this little girl, perhaps other, the brothers and sisters of this girl. So I'm sure they're genuinely mourning. You can't just, uh, just uh, but this is a real ridicule. Laughing, not like when we make jokes. This is a ridicule. It's making me think uh, too, how you were saying about like at what point when the body starts changing already going through the decomposing process. Like mm. maybe these people genuinely knew, like you said in verse, what, 38, that really proves that she was dead. So maybe they're, mm. they're like, no, we know the signs. We know that she is dead. Mm. Look at this guy who just comes up here and he's saying that she's asleep. Like, what? Yeah. what is this guy talking about? Like, we know. We know the signs. We know she's dead. And then, yeah, maybe that's their perspective, you know. Makes me think of a story I read. There is a worship leader, I guess, that, and then, but she really believed that they could raise her back from the dead if they just pray enough. So for a few days they tried. And in the end, obviously, they, but even <laughs> reading that story is just like, no, it's not going to happen. So just trying to understand the crowd's position. And not just discount it as, you know, they're paid mourners because it doesn't say anything about that. Even if there were, there, there were some who are family members. They're genuinely sad. And death is, uh, today, our medicine actually, if I remember right from Pastor John's sermon, it didn't really very, very, how do you say, effective until the 19th century. So before then, people, you know, like one, one in three women would die at childbirth. Doctors didn't know what it meant hygiene. Like, you need to wash your hands with soap. That just wasn't. They didn't understand that concept. But death was very common to these people. They knew what death looked like. And again, legitimately so. If Jesus was any other man, like this would be just ridiculous. I mean, I see a raisin king over there. That's a chicken restaurant. If we were to go and, you know, buy dinner and then one of you said, that chicken is not dead. It's just sleeping. Right? We'd just be like, dude, what are you talking about? I don't know. That's a good illustration, but I Maybe I'll go go there for breakfast tomorrow. Another side note, usually when, when somebody passes, their color changes immediately. So you go oh. from your, yeah, you just, if you don't get oxygen, your 
mm. just the red blood cells that gives you color. And when you mm. start turning, you start turning blue and then after a while you start looking grayish. So mm. it's not like hours, it's just minutes. So they probably, like you said, they saw that she was dead. That's helpful to know from people who have experience. They were talking at uh, Men of the Word, if anybody else went there on Wednesday about like, uh, um, I guess in Russia, like they don't embalm mm -hmm. and uh, they did a pastoral visit. And just in a short amount of time, you can, there's like a stench of death too. Like you can like, mm -hmm. like even so much so that like cats were like wailing and things like that, you know, like, mm -hmm. like the, the strong odor. So And G yeah, Jesus in verse 40 was able to make decisive decisions. He put them all out. Sometimes in these tragedies, you get frozen. Like you don't know what to do. He, Jesus took charge. He's the stranger who walks in. He takes charge. Can you imagine like someone kicking you out of your own house? <laughs> That's probably what happened to some of these crowd. Like, dude, you're getting me out and this is my house. Like the brothers and sisters. Yeah, I know. I would be like, excuse me, who is this? I can't go yeah. see my niece. Excuse me, what? Like, yeah, yeah. I totally get it. <laughs> I could see that happening. <laughs> yeah. Especially, especially with family, sometimes like there's always conflict. There's not, it's not like everyone has a, a clear understanding of each other, you know, there's always something. But when, like, especially when it's like, he even says right here, it's just uh, the father and the mother. So everyone else is just more mainly on to focus on themselves or to just have their mindset or elsewhere, not, not really, uh, have the love of the, of the little girl who, really. No one else believed in Jesus. That's the main thing. I'm sure they, they'd they love to have the girl back, but their rejection of Jesus was greater than whatever hope there could be of this girl being alive. Verse 41, I think this is where we'll make some very good observations. There's some things rich here. Verse 41, imagine this scene. Takes the child by the hand and tells her to, little girl, I say, rise, arise. What's amazing about that? It shows his power. To uh -huh. Can you describe the scene? Describe it in detail, especially what you shared with us from the, you know, you oh, know oh, when someone's oh, dead. Right. Yeah, because so I guess I imagine when he touch, touches her and tells her to arise, color returns back to her skin. Yes. She opens her eyes and she sits up and she looks around and looks for her mother and father. Her mother and father probably rushed over to her. And notice um, the first thing, Jesus takes her, takes the dead girl by the hand. That's something to think about. Right. In that culture, you're you would become unclean. That would have been shocking already before he said anything. There's like a lot of parallels between uh, this girl and uh, the the lady with the hemorrhage. Like he heals both. One of them is like he heals both of them with the power touch. Because I mean, like with Lazarus, he didn't have to like he just told him to come out. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, so he could have just said arise, touch. To, as a and just like we said with the woman, instead of her making Jesus unclean, Jesus made her clean. It's the same yeah. kind of thing. He gave her life. Just by his touch, I mean, was he was he wasn't unclean. Why does it record what he said? And this is actually Aramaic. There's actually three languages the Bible is written in, and Aramaic's the third one. Though a very small portion of the Bible, but still there nonetheless. I think like one of the minor prophets is written in this language. So that's not Hebrew. That's actually Aramaic. Yeah, that's the language they spoken at the time. He spoke Greek and Aramaic and Hebrew too, I guess. Yeah. Why does he say that in the language, or why does it record it in that way? Could it be that the family is Aramaic? Could it be the family uh, is there, like their language, you know, their, uh, their background is Aramaic? If I'm saying it correctly. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they're Jews. So, no. Yeah, maybe it shows us Jesus speaks in the people's language. So we don't go to, you know, most countries, unless they speak English there, you don't, you don't go to China and proclaim the gospel in Spanish. Got to be in their language. Yeah, imagine the girl spoke to their girl in uh, a language she didn't understand. That'd be weird. I guess that also shows that personal relationship with her, too. Like, I understand you. I'm at your level. I'm speaking in your language. <clears throat> yeah. That, uh... Personal. That's it. Same with the personal. Felt power leaving him. You know, that is actually quite true. Because, like, like when, when they speak in their own language, it's like, it's, it's personal. You know? Like, it's like a... Like everyone can speak English, but if you're speaking Spanish, you know, it's like, you know, sometimes they, uh, Spanish, they say something. I, I, I lost my Spanish, so I really don't know. <laughs> but I know, like, when, when people speak Spanish, um, they have a clear understanding instead of speaking English, you know. There's like words that don't translate well 
into another language. So when you speak someone's personal language and you use certain words or idioms or something, and there's just this understanding, you know, going through an interpreter or going through something else, like some things are lost in translation. To be able to talk to somebody one on one in their own language that you both can understand is very personal. Mm. Very uh call it an intimate register. It's not formal, it's not distant, it's very intimate. And interestingly enough, the parentheses, this is also inspired in the Bible. It's helping to make what Jesus said back then able to be understood by the Roman Gentiles who are reading Mark right now. So that's very that's interesting. Right. If anything, this verse you see a lot of different languages going on. These are very endearing endearing terms. Daughter for the woman who was bleeding and little girl for this. And notice, Jesus didn't pray to the Father. In the Old Testament, the prophets, they would always does it right there. He doesn't go through the Father. He himself is God. And the times he did pray, he just wanted to show others who receives the glory. But here, Jesus didn't pray huh, immediately. I don't yeah, know sometimes. about you, but go oh, ahead, Jaime. Okay. I was going to say on verse 32, it shows like how, you know, um, when I was going to say, uh, you know, it was, uh, it, you know, by God's grace, you know, out of his kindness that he, um, he raised her up, right? Can you say it again? No, I said, um, I, I was going to say like by his kindness, you know, by God's grace that he raised her up. He took her by his, her hand, you know, even just helping someone get up. That's just a kind gesture from Jesus. There's probably been less gentle ways of people waking you up. I don't know about y'all, but when I wake up in the morning, it's hard for me to get up right away. It's almost our own routine to try to get out of bed. But this girl got up right away. And then it gives you the, for she was 12 years old, which is like, immediately that would recall this scene back to the woman, bleeding woman scene. Like, they're, they're both tied together. <laughs> and I was listening to the Bible study uh, on YouTube and on Zoom this morning. Yeah, Jesus is in all the small details. You see he's in control. There's a reason why he brought these two in the whole universe at this one point to show that he's God, he's in control. I don't think we'll be able to get to that last verse for now, but what's something, how can we interpret, apply this passage? And one I was thinking about, I always like to end my end exhortations concluding with Christ. And why can Jesus do this? Why can the dead girl come back to life? Because he is God, she can be raised from the dead. Not rocket science. That the parents and his three disciples got to see this scene, and no one else could see it. But now, today with Scripture, everyone who has heard about this passage has the privilege of being there too. And the question is, how will you respond? Will you believe Jesus is the Lord? Or will you now, getting to witness this miracle, reject it like anyone else in the crowd would have? So Jesus spared them from keeping on more judgment on them by not including them in this miracle. But for those who hear this passage, know this passage, and reject this passage, judgment will be much worse for them than for the crowd outside who wasn't let in. So that was just a meditation from yesterday. One benefit of not sleeping well is I'm just lying on the bed a lot. <laughs> I get to think on a lot of things. Yeah, maybe it's good to have sleep apnea. For a season. Any other thoughts? <laughs> for a season, yeah. We'll see. Maybe I'll become Superman once they figure out why, <laughs> whatever is wrong then the world will be changed. It's like they said, Martin Luther, the Reformation happened uh, when he was introduced to coffee. I don't know if that's true. That was very profound what you to say. Huh? About the coffee? We had the privilege of being there. Um, I'm a very visual person. And in order to interpret, you have to what these two are saying and mm -hmm. turn the linear language into T. So um, I didn't think of it like that. That we have the mm -hmm. privilege of being there witnessing the miracle happen. Um, because the people did not have the privilege. Yes. I never thought it is. And you know what? I didn't think about that either before, too. So it's just the Holy Spirit revealing these kind of things for his glory. It's interesting to think about how Jesus said, This little girl is only asleep. And I'm about to go to a sleep study. So it's just maybe I'll think about what what does that mean? How long are you gonna be there for you to stay the night? Uh, yeah, stay the night, and then they sail in that 5 a.m. So, like, Jesus, somebody's going to come call me at 5 a.m. to get up, and I'll have to get up, no matter how I feel. So, <laughs> My son, rise. <laughs> it's just time to More of some person just, oh, it's time to get, get up. Get up something to eat. <laughs> get that Raisin Cane. Chick-fil-A. It's Raisin Cane. <laughs> you Raisin yeah. Cane's not able <laughs> 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 Raising cane, I oh boy.
Are they open up? Yeah. Yeah. Devil's chicken? <laughs> Devil's uh, chicken. I have no idea. Yeah, Kane's not it gonna. It is definitely not blessed. Praise <laughs> the life. Oh, man. Raising Kane to judgment. <laughs> could someone close in prayer for us? And a girl could close in prayer, please. I mean, God hears the prayers of his daughters. Our Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this fellowship, Lord, that you allowed us to have. Thank you, Lord, for how you have sustained my brothers and sisters Friday and also for waking me up this Saturday morning. Thank you for your new mercies that are new every morning and for your grace that sustain us, sustain us, Lord, for the whole day. Father, I just want to thank you for the most importantly, we pray for the, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that we are able to understand your word, listen, and we can understand your word, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for speaking to us through your word. Lord, may we re always remember meditating and delighting in your word. Discover wonderful things, Lord, that you want us to learn from you. And Father, I pray that you will give my brothers and sisters in Christ a good sleep tonight and give them a new energy tomorrow, especially as they have their face-to-face um, -face Bible study, even though I cannot be with them. Lord, but thank you for the privilege, Lord, to be able to know them and to meet them, Lord, via Zoom. We thank you, Lord, for everything. And this we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, actually, our, our Bible study meets on the first and third Saturday, so we won't meet tomorrow. But I was actually just going to invite whoever wanted to come over. I'll just be working on my homework, but feel free to bring things to read our other stuff. And if you want to hang out for lunch or dinner, too. Hey, just come on over. I'll probably be at the house, or maybe I'll go to the <laughs> library. If I know on my own it could be hard to study at the house. But we'll see. If y'all want to hang out, just let me know, and we can figure it out. Okay. If someone's coming over, then I'll stay at the house. You keep me accountable that I don't watch anime. <laughs> Much harder to watch anime when your fellow classmates are sitting next to you. <laughs> yeah. I'm reading like a cute cat comic or something. It's not manly and feminine like. Yeah, always a privilege, always a joy to study with y'all and... I thank God for y'all.